We wouldn't be here today if it weren't for the horse. They cleared the way for the first explorers. They fought in our wars. They plowed our fields for food. They took us where we needed to go and were our constant and valuable companions. A very wise person once said it's the journey that will give us what we need to be better human beings. We think that journey with the horse will give us what we need to be great, compassionate beings. Our experts are going to talk about their journey so far with the horse and what it's meant to them and where it will continue. We all obviously love horses, but what is it that drives this passion? What is it that moves us so deeply? So Winston Churchill once said, um, famous words, uh, the, the outside of a horse is, is good for the inside of a man, but the inside of a horse is good for the inside of a man as well. But, you know, for, for me and in my family, for so many generations, you know, the horses have given us so much. They have made us what we are, you know? And I've had a lot of horses through my life, whether they were my own or whether I worked with other people's horses. And they all, all of them, I, I remember the, the, the ponies in Australia that I groomed on the circus there, they did a liberty act, you know, I remember their names, you know, down the line I was 12, you know, I'm not going to say how old I am right now, but that's a long time ago. So they all, you know, throughout my life, they all have a little piece of my heart, you know, and of course we have our ones that we've bonded with, yeah. you know, unlike the rest. Like my Tesoro, my Frisian, you know, he was my partner. He back and forth to Europe with me three times. We, we were everywhere. I remember riding him in Dusseldorf, Germany, in the woods. We were working there. Um, but, you know, I said to him, I said, can you believe this? I mean, here we are in Dusseldorf again. You know, years later, we've already been home. We were in Vegas. We were, now we're back in Dusseldorf. And I just started bawling. <laughs> and the horse is like, oh, you know, what are we doing, Mom? And we're just going along in the woods. And, you know, just when you have a, a, a partner like that, there's nothing else like it. You know, this is why we do it. Because, you know, once you've established this bond and this trust with them and are bringing them along and, teaching them things and um, it's it's just so rewarding um, there's nothing else like it and just and having that communication with an animal um, and, and talking that horse into doing something that I want to do and something that the horse can do uh, it's real important to me that a that a horse that a horse has the ability to do what I'm asking it to do not every horse can run and slide um, so if it can't run its life, doesn't mean it's not a good horse. It just needs to find another job. It's just like people. Not everybody can be an interviewer. And not everybody can be a computer expert. So you have to find a field that you're passionate for. And with horses, it's the same thing. If a horse is a really good jumping horse, why do I want to take that horse and turn it into a rainer? Um, and to me, it's, it's the same thing with a cow horse. A cow horse, or cutting horse, or even a rainer cow horse, they really enjoy playing with a cow. And you can feel it inside of them, the excitement they get from doing it. And with a reining horse, it's the same thing. That horse likes to do or can do what I'm asking it to do. If it can't, then I'm going to send it home or we're going to find that horse another job. Because they're just a wonderful animal. Um, it, it, it's really unique to watch them run and play and just, just be a horse. I mean, but, you know, I pretty much love dogs the same way and cats the same way. I think the amazing part to me is just to observe what goes on in life. If you just sit and watch what happens and how animals interact and, and all the things that go on, it's, it's just a, it's a mystery. You know, you, you're never going to understand it all. But I love to watch animals interact. Why? Uh, because I think there's so much you can learn from them. You learn what goes on in their mind and you can watch how it applies to people. I mean, you, can, you, you, can, you begin to understand people a lot better just watching horses or watching dogs or watching any animal interact. The social structure that they have, how they play with each other, how they discipline each other. I mean, how they have a, a pecking order or 
you know, they make horses, the horses have to behave. There's, there's a social thing there that you have to behave. Unacceptable behavior in humans and in horses or dogs or anything, they will weed those people out or weed that horse out. And uh, they'll banish them from the herd. You know, you take a young stud colt who's 18 months old and there's 10 broodmares out there. That young stud colt starts showing his oats or being stupid. They will literally banish him from the herd. They kick him out of the herd. Now, when he's out there by himself at that age, in his mind, he's going to get eaten. <laughs> I mean, he's dinner on the plate for somebody else. When he's in the herd, then he has protection around him and he feels more secure. And so when his behavior changes, they accept him back into the herd. He messes, he screws up again, you're back out. Same thing with people. I think you, know, you just have to look at a horse like a horse. I mean, a horse is going to think differently than we do. Um, men and women think differently. I mean, everybody thinks a little bit different. And so you have to understand what's going on with that horse and, and why he thinks the way he thinks, why he reacts to certain stimulus, no matter what it is. And you have to understand what's going on in his mind. If you understand what's going on in the horse's mind, then it's pretty easy to figure out how to handle the horse. <laughs> Same with people. <laughs> Most people. I grew up riding horses. My dad brought home two ponies in the back of a pickup truck from an auction. And we rode like little Indians everywhere. I can remember um, Thanksgiving Day, me and my pony off in the woods, off in the groves. Very different than what it is like for kids now. I mean, our, my mom said she never worried about me as long as I was on my pony. The horses have been liberating. Um, they've just meant so much to me. I, I just, um, I found a part of myself on horseback that is, it, it's never there anywhere else. And um, every horse that I, I get an opportunity to work with, this is gonna sound silly to some people, maybe even offensive to others, but I, I pray that each one, when they leave me, that they'll never meet an unkind person, that they'll always have a fair trainer and a good owner. I just get up every day and I'm very thankful. You know, I look around in utter amazement at times. How did I end up here? I was a little, little tiny girl. We went to our local college with an agricultural school and they had what was called A-Day. And A-Day was a day where all of the college students that had worked through college all had to show off on their projects that they had had through the semester. Some of them happened to have been horses that they've trained. And these horses were actually part of what they would call the pony ride amusement of the, of the whole uh, fair. So I begged my mom and begged my mom for the pony ride ticket and I went up and I got on this paint Shetland pony and it was this long haired girl's project that she was in charge of feeding and taking care of and I get on this pony and I'm walking around the circle and the, the little girl no more than 18 was telling me about how she fed this pony and it was starving when she got it and she would trim its feet and feed it the right food and she was in charge of making sure it got exercise and I couldn't believe that I'm riding this pony and there was all this that went on to it just like I take care of my dog when I was at home as a kid and I just loved it and when I got off I was petting the pony and of course I'm getting dirty and my parents are like okay it's time to get off the pony ride and I couldn't get enough and I begged them for another ticket so I go and I get another ticket and I go back and I get back on the same pony again. And it was really, really funny. And, and, and the little girl apparently rode at a barn and she said, oh, if you love riding this much, ask your parents and maybe they'll let you take a little lesson. And there's a barn down the road and that was about it for me. I just couldn't get over it. And I worked as a barn helper from the time I was six years old. My, my whole, I just, my whole, uh, elementary school into junior high into high school was spent with nothing with every waking moment I would want to be at the bar and learn how to feed them learn how to take care of them I wasn't even old enough to carry a water bucket but I would try and that to me was taking care of them and riding them and loving them and that to me was what that that moment was when I really decided that this was something that was in my blood it was just awesome 
and uh, I been doing it ever since. People tend to lose touch with the fact that these are animals with spirits inside of them. And we were just talking moments ago before the segment that there was a horse that was a kind of forgotten horse. And no one saw the horse for what that horse really was. And it was just discarded because people didn't appreciate it. They didn't see it as a spirit that might be too spirited for them or too deep for them, or maybe a horse that just wasn't as smart enough for them. And they discarded it. They discarded it at an auction or an adoption site. And then you find that that horse loses touch with who they are because they don't have a human to love them. Why do you love horses? That, it was interesting when you asked me that question because you gave me a chance to think about it in advance. And my first reaction was, you know, how can you not? Like, well, I've been doing this for, I've been riding for 46, seven years, you know, and it's so much just plain part of me that I, I never think of why I do it. I do it because that's what I do. And so then I started thinking about it. And the, the conclusion I came to was because it, it, when I first started riding as a youngish adult as opposed to a little kid, it was just so amazing to me that they let us do that. It was so like, you kidding me? You, you'll let me, you know, I mean, you're that generous and you're that willing to help and I can do this and you don't mind and 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 then you know I you know there's the, the, the joke about the the Buddhist that goes up to the hot dog vendor and says make me one with everything got it and um, and horses do that you know like when I was first riding you know enough that I wasn't gonna kill myself but I remember the first times galloping across a hillside in the sunset and, and galloping along with a with a deer maybe you know 50 yards over there but running running side by side and and you know jet skis don't do that and, and snowmobiles don't do that and motors not for me I mean it's like it's it's like well, there you are one with everything and, and anything that matters so that's why and riding around with the wind in my hair not a care in the world it was, it was just soothing and calming just to run around the pasture wide open as fast as we could go and just lose myself. Um, laying around with him, looking up at the sky and he's right next to me grazing and you know, doing his little thing and staying right by my side out in the pasture. I, know, I could talk yeah. about horses all day long. I, I love horses and, and the six guys that we have are, are my boys. That's, that's my boys. <laughs> what? I love horses because they're true. They're true as the driven snow. A horse's reaction, oftentimes predicated by whatever it is that you do or what you've done in the past. In my opinion, a horse has a memory like an elephant. Probably better than an elephant. They remember the time that you hit him in the head and now your horse is head shot. They remember every time they see you, you have a horsey treat. So they run to find you. They're as welcoming as a Labrador Retriever when you first get home. If you've treated them well and they look forward to seeing you. Horses are majestic, they're beautiful. You have an 1,100 pound Labrador Retriever at your fingertips, or you have an 1,100 pound Badger or a Tasmanian Devil, all by the way your relationship intermingles with that horse's attitude and the way he is. If you have respect for the horse, generally they will have respect for you, but do not, do not mistake your kindness with weakness. You must demand that that horse treat you with respect. Don't let him bite you. Don't let him rub on you. A horse is true. Their mannerisms are true. If they're flighty, it's because they're scared. If 
they're scared, it's because something's happened. They're a prey animal. Understand that while you're leading that horse along and between the horse and another object, something jumps out and he runs you over. It was an act out of fear because that's what they do. They either fight or flight, mostly flight. Um, and so my first pony come out, come out of the, come out of the auctions, quite honestly, and it was a, about a 13 hand um, Welsh pony cross. Um, I, I called it. It was a grey. It was a mare, so we called. I called it grey lace. Uh, and that that was my first pony. I probably spent more time falling off it than I spent staying on it. Uh, but um, she was great. Yeah, taught me a lot. What'd she teach you? She taught me how to stay on. <laughs> yeah, but she was good, you know. And being boys, uh, you know, I think we, we possibly, you know, we, we love, you know, we, we, we were brought up in the countryside. And so um, there was, you know, my dad, dad was sort of a, worked, on, worked on the farms. And uh, so we were always brought up. Animals were part of our life. And um, I suppose being boys a little bit with ponies, it was, uh, you know, it was the adrenaline thing, you know, how fast could we go and uh, how big could we jump, quite honestly. Um, you know, and there, you know, as far as that goes, it was, it was, uh, you know, huge adrenaline rush, quite honestly. So uh, I think uh, that's, what, that's what gave us a kick as kids and got us going, you know. We were basically, you know, when we were on our pony, we were free. We could go anywhere. Um, nobody could stop us. We were free to go wherever we wanted to, when we wanted to, and um, and get into a lot of trouble because of that, quite honestly. So, uh, but it was great. It was great. Sometimes it's a little bit in your blood, isn't it? There's definitely horse people, and there's not horse people. And I think, you know, I'm definitely an animal person, and I think I love all animals, and I love riding. And so that's probably why I fell in love with horses, is because they're an animal, but also um, you can do such a great sport with them. And there's a lot more to them than, uh, you know, bonding and the sport, and they're just different than other animals, really. It's still the same feeling you get today when things go well, and we, you know, when for us being event riders, a lot of it is about cross country, and the adrenaline you get in the high and, and then afterwards, you know, first you're on the adrenaline and the high and then afterwards when you start really thinking about it, um, there's something amazing about a great partnership when you have it, which, you know, it's rare, even with us and all the horses we ride, you know, it's rare that you find the one that you have that special bond with. They say you don't know the true nature of love. If you want to know the true nature, lock your wife and your dog in the trunk of your car. Open it up in 20 minutes and see which one's glad to see you. I assure you it won't be the wife. Well, that same love and camaraderie you have with a horse. If you put a horse in the trunk, will they be happy to see you when you open it up? Generally, you will not get the same reaction that you get from your Labrador, I assure you. He will be glad to get out of the trunk there will be no ill will or malice left behind like you would experience with your wife. He will be just glad to get out of the trunk. And when we were on our pony, we were free. We could go anywhere. Um, nobody could stop us. The horses have been liberating, heart filling. They, they just. My first reaction was, you know, how can you not? Like, well, it was just so amazing to me that they let us do that. I love horses because they're true. I love horses just the communication between the two of them. Around with the wind in my hair, not a care in the world. It was, it was just soothing and calming just to run around the pasture wide open as fast as we could go and just lose myself. Not only are they just magnificent to look at, giant beasts with the shiny coats and the big bright eyes. Um, but they have so much personality. Making them respect and trust you enough 
and ask them to do things that then that trust and that bond has been created you know that they say okay you say it's okay it's okay you know you know the, the horse in general has done so much for humanity that you know we got to give them some credit they've been such an important part of our world and not just here in the united states for heaven's sake but for centuries and centuries you know all over the world they've been such an important part of us and even you know city folk now who feel very removed from horses because it's been a few generations they're not exempt you know if they looked back in their own history to their great grandfather i bet you they either rode a horse or had a horse that needed to pull a wagon or a carriage or something, you know? So they're not exempt, no one's exempt. They're just a little removed from them.